Congressman Patman, members of our organization have become increasingly concerned about rising interest rates. Our farmers are literally priced out of the market. Uh, as many of your people know, Angus, I've had the Secretary of the Treasury up before the Banking and Currency Committee, of which I'm chairman. I asked him if there wasn't something the administration could do. The increase in interest rates from 7.5% to 8.5% was one whole point. That's the first time in history it's ever been done. Here to four it was one quarter and one time one half. That 1% increase meant an additional $15 billion a year burden on the American people. Every family will have to pay several hundred dollars a year extra just to make up for that 1%. The situation, as you know, is critical. It would take some time for Congress to act. Well, it's clear that the Secretary of the Treasury and the President could use moral suasion as one very effective weapon to force a rollback in interest rates almost immediately. Previous administrations have forced a rollback in prime lending rates, but this administration is too caught up with the bankers to act for the public. If something is not done quickly, it's up to the, if something is, is to be done quickly, it's up to the administration to do it, Angus. What was Secretary of the Treasury David Kennedy's reaction when you asked him why he didn't do something about the big bankers getting together and raising the prime interest rate from 7.5 to 8.5 percent? Uh, Secretary Kennedy not only indicated that he had done nothing, that he hadn't even discussed the matter with, his, with the big banks, but that he didn't intend to do anything. When I asked him why, his answer was, why should I? The simultaneous answer of uh, action of the big banks, it seemed to you, I understand, involved antitrust law violation. Have you called this matter to the attention of the Department of Justice? Yes, I have. I wrote a letter to the Attorney General almost immediately after the action of the big banks, and I suggested that th their action, which occurred early the morning of June the 9th, be investigated. The big banks, led by the Wall Street complex, raised the rate at almost the same amount all across the country. Within minutes, all the big banks had acted in identical announcements, and with each raising the rate a full point from 7.5 to 8.5 percent. It seems obvious that the banks moved in a conspiracy to fix the interest rates in violation of the antitrust laws. Mr. Patman, have you had any indication that the Department of Justice is really going to investigate and determine whether or not the law was violated? Yes, the uh, Assistant Attorney General for Antitrust, Trust, Mr. Richard McLaurin, appeared before the Bank and Currency Committee on June the 21st and announced that full-scale investigation was underway. I'm hopeful that Mr. McLaurin will have a report for us very soon. Frankly, finding the conspiracy in this case is as easy as tracking an elephant in the snow. Do you think that Secretary Kennedy, under existing laws, has the power to restrain the Federal Reserve Board? Of course, the Secretary and the President do have power to restrain the Board. Under Section 6 of the Federal Reserve Act, and I quote, quote, Whenever, wherever any power vested by this act in the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System or the Federal Reserve agent appears to conflict with the powers of the Secretary of the Treasury, such power shall be exercised subject to the supervision of the control of the Secretary, in the quotation. Not only that, but there are other laws which give the President power. The Employment Act of 1946 instructs the President to coordinate the policy of all agencies, but the administration so far has refused to use any of its power. Furthermore, the administration has not given the slightest hint that it disapproves the tight money, high interest policy of the Federal Reserve Board. 
On the contrary, it seems to rely exclusively on such a policy to control inflation. The record is clear on that point. High interest has not controlled inflation. It has made it worse. The reasons why are obvious. Every time a businessman has to pay higher interest on money borrowed necessary to his business operations, he merely adds the interest cost to the price of the items that he sells. The public pays in higher prices, which are not only burdensome, but which escalate the forces of inflation. Congressman, since the Federal Reserve Board and monopoly control seems to be the main cause of high interest, is there anything that Congress can do? Will the constitutional power of the Congress permit Congress to act? There is simple, there is ample authority in the Constitution which says that Congress shall have the power to create and control the money supply. This is clear. All authorities that I know agree on this point. What is needed is that Congress assert its constitutional prerogative and bring the Federal Reserve Board under its control. Furthermore, the Federal Reserve Act should be amended to make the terms of the members of the board coterminous with the term of the President of the United States. The Federal Reserve Board under our Constitution is not independent and should not be able to defy both the Congress and the President. The dictatorial power of the bank should not be tolerated by the American people. Why do you say that the banks represent a dictatorial power? Because the Open Market Committee, which consists of the seven members of the board appointed by the president, plus five bankers, really there are 12 bankers there. Seven of them don't vote, but there are 12 of the biggest bankers in the nation in that secret meeting every time, and only seven members of the board. They make the decision regarding the money supply and interest rates and matters pertaining to credit. It's easy to see why the policies of the Open Market Committee are, not, are only carried on for the benefit of the bankers. Suppose, for example, several members of the Federal Reserve Board, which is heavily weighted with banker-minded individuals, want to protect the public by keeping down interest rates. Obviously, they would be outvoted. The record shows that the board and the Open Market Committee have acted in the interest of the bankers over a period of many, many years. Was there ever a time when the Federal Reserve Board paid attention to the President and the Congress? Yes. During the administration of Franklin D. Roosevelt and Harry Truman, interest rates were kept down. Long-term bonds were sold at about 2.5% or less. During those years, from 1939 to 1953, 14 years, during the roughest time in the history of this nation. And if interest rates can be kept down then to 2.5% and below on long-term government bonds, it can be kept down any time. Do you think that control of money and interest rates will ever be restored to the Congress and the people? Yes, if enough citizens put pressure on Congress to do something about the present disastrous situation, which has repealed usury laws all over the nation and is now making it prohibitive even for a family with a moderate income to buy and pay for a home. The people of North Dakota should write their congressmen. They should talk to their neighbors. There are four people in Washington that, they're, that they have a right to call on and request and demand that action be taken that would help the public interest. These four people are the president elected by the people from all over the nation, the two United States senators in the state of the citizen writing the letter, and the member of Congress representing this citizen. They have a, any citizen has a right to call on those four all of them in Washington, and they should call on all four of them in this case because it's an emergent situation. Do you find any signs that the Congress and the people are waking up to the situation? Yes, only recently. In fact, just uh, days ago, the House Democrats in a caucus on Capitol Hill unanimously decided to make high interest rates a campaign issue against Republicans next year. 
I told this group, quote, the Nixon administration has abdicated its role, and the hopes for low interest rates are dependent on the actions of the Democrats in the Congress. If the Democrats make it plain that they want a rollback of interest rates and they will not tolerate further increases, the commercial banking industry will get the message quickly. The American public will get the message and the contrast between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party on this issue will be made crystal clear in the quotation. 